Okay, so super easy. You guys can either use the box method or you can use the distribution method, which I, which I like to call, call leapfrog. So we're taking those first two terms, the H multiplies by the second binomial, and then the 11 multiplies by the second binomial. Super easy. How do we finish this one? How do we finish it? We got to combine the like terms because this isn't quite finished yet. So we're going to put those two terms together. So we're going to have h squared plus 16h plus 55. All right. Um, uh, we don't really do FOIL anymore. That doesn't make any, any sense to you guys. The box method or the blow apart method, which I will teach you in a few seconds, um, works on this one. Uh, actually, the ways, the, all the ways I've taught you have worked. Okay, so we can do it two different ways for these ones. So now you see that it's not a binomial by a binomial. It's a binomial by a trinomial. And we're going to talk about multiplying three things together as well. Okay, so do you want to do box first? Do you want to try box first? Okay, box. So, if I'm doing the box method, I have 2h, and don't forget you got to take the sign in front, so that's a positive 5. And then this one's going to be h squared, positive 3h, minus 4. So the box method still works, we just don't have 4 anymore, we have 6. All right. So we're going to go h squared times 2h. Two 2h cubed. cubed, yeah. What's the exponent on that h? It's the invisible number. Three, one. Hopefully 1. Okay. 2h cubed. 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 <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, then we're going to go 5 by h squared. So we should have 5 h squared. And then we have 3h times 2h. 6h squared. And then we have 3h by 5, which should be 15h. And then negative 4 times positive 2h is going to be a negative 8h. Negative 4 by negative 5 is a negative 20. Okay, so I'm going to use my new handy-dandy highlighters that I bought. Um, I can combine h squared and h squared. I can combine h's together. Do I have any more cubes? Yes. One cube, the 2h cube. Do I have any more than this one that I'm pointing at? Oh, no. No, I do not. Do I have any more constants that I could combine together? No. So those two I'm just going to leave kind of open because those are going to be um, the ones that don't have to be combined with anything. So I always start with the largest exponent. So the largest exponent is this one. So when I'm putting my answers together, so 2h cubed. Um, it's really important if you're using the box method to pay attention to your signs. I noticed some people made some box mistakes with the positive and negative. So just, those are like really fine details that you need to pay attention to. So I have 5h squared and a positive 6h squared. So how many h squareds do I have? I have five of these ones and six in this box. How many do I have? 11. Yeah, I have 11. I have positive 11. So that's going to be add 11h. Oh, sorry, h squared. All right, next up is my purple or my pink ones. 
So I'm going to have 15H minus 8H. How many? 15 minus 8. 7. So I'm going to have a positive 7H. And then my last one here is the constant, so it just stays out there. Okay, so I, there's nothing else I can combine. I'm done. Perfect. Okay, so this one, we're going to leapfrog it. You have a trinomial by a trinomial. All right, so I'm going to need three different colors, but that's okay. So I'm going to go first term by the first term, and that's going to give me what? Definitely negative 12, but how many Fs? What's the exponent on the F when I'm multiplying them? Four. Because we're going to add the exponents when we multiply them. And then I'm going to leapfrog to the second term. So I'm going to have a negative 3F squared by a negative 1F. So what's my number's positive 3 now? F cubed. Because that has the invisible 1 on it. Okay, last one for this round. Negative 3f squared times by a negative 6. I should get a positive 18f squared. So there was no f on this one, but there was on this one. So you just keep that entire f squared. Okay. Um, second term. So it's this one this time, so it's a positive 3. I'm going to multiply that by the first term, and I'm going to get a positive 12f cubed. And then I'm going to multiply by the second term, and I'm going to have a negative 3f squared. And then I'm going to times it by the last term, which gives me negative 18f. Okay, now I'm going for my third color, and I don't know exactly where I'm going to put my arrows, so you'll have to bear with me. So now I'm dealing with a negative 2, because you always have to take the sign in front of it, right? So I have a negative 2 times by 4f squared. So it's going to be a negative 8 f squared. And then I have a negative 2 times by a negative f. So positive 2f. One of my grade 12s asked me, do I have to make my f's fancy? Absolutely not. It's just a habit I've gotten into. And then the last one is negative 2 times by a negative 6, which is going to give me a positive 12. Okay, so now I'm going to use a highlighter, and I'm going to highlight like terms. I'm grabbing my yellow highlighter. So I'm going to add, are there any f to the exponent 4s anywhere else in here? No. So that's my only one. Any other f cubes? Yes. No. Yes. Yes, yes. So positive 3f cubed plus 12f cubed. And then I got some f squareds happening. I have positive 18, negative 3, and a minus 8. Where's my green highlighter? Okay, then I'm going to the f. And I have... 18f and positive 2f. And then I just have that single constant there. Okay, so now I'm going to write it as a simplified polynomial because I'm going to combine any like terms that I have. So I have negative 12f to the exponent 4 because I always want to start with my highest exponent. It's that math grammar coming around. Now I'm going to do my yellow highlighted one. So I'm going to combine these two. So how many f cubes do I have? I got 12 here and I have 3 here. 
15. So positive 15 f cubed. So notice when you're adding, you don't change that exponent. It's only when you're multiplying. Uh, then I'm going to go to my yellows. I have a positive 18 minus 3. Put your hand down, hat. 18 minus 3. 15. Okay, 15 minus 8. Where? Positive 7, yes. So we're going to have plus 7f squared. Now we're going to go to our green ones, and we have negative 18 plus 2. Negative 18 plus 2. Negative 16. And don't forget the variable that goes with it. And then we just have that constant at the end. Okay, that's pretty exciting. And you're done. There's nothing else we can combine there. Easy peasy, right? It's really, it's not, but it does take, sorry, Lyndon. It does take some concentration, and it's really easy to get mixed up in the bigger ones, just because there's a lot of the same letters, and you've got to pay attention to the exponents. Okay. Um, okay, so this is a check. Again, like I, I like to give you guys tools just to make sure you know how to check your answers. Um, so am I right? One way to check is to substitute a number in for the variable. Okay, so this is our answer from the page previous. It should be. There's that, is that, that's what we proved, right? Yeah, yeah? we got the same answer as on the back page? It's very hard for me to remember. Okay, so to check to see if you're right, what? I have tried this before, but it didn't work. Okay. Okay. All right. So the <laughs> easiest way to do this is to pick a nice number to substitute in. I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that a really nice number is the number one. Because what is one squared? One. What's one cubed? One. What's one to the exponent? Ten. Still one. So picking a nice number is going to help you with this. So what we're going to do is this is called the left-hand side of the equation. This is the right-hand side of the equation. So we're just going to see that both the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal to each other. In math, we call this verifying. All right, so I'm going to substitute in, everywhere I see the letter F, I'm going to substitute in the number 1. So in these brackets, this would be negative 3, 1 squared, plus 3 times 1, minus 2 times 4 times 1 squared minus 1 minus 6. Okay, that's the left-hand side. Should we just work this for right now? We'll just work on the left-hand side for a second. Okay, what did we say 1 squared was? 1, because what's 1 times 1? Still 1. So 1 times by negative 3. Rahat, put your hand down. No? Okay. Negative 3. What's 3 times 1? Positive 3. So add 3 minus 2. Uh, 4 times 1 squared. So 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4 minus 1 minus 6. All right. Order of operation tells us we need to do what's inside the brackets first. So we're going to combine these terms. So negative 3 plus 3. 0. 0 minus 2. Negative 2. 4 minus 1. 3. 3 minus 6. Okay. Hmm, let's try that again. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 minus 6 is a negative 3. You are correct.
No, that. Okay, I'm with you now. Okay, what is that? Plus one. What? Six. Plus six. <laughs> so what operation is between these two brackets? If nothing stated, it is multiply. So negative two times negative three is a positive six. Okay, so that was our left-hand side. We just worked the left-hand side there, and that equals out to 6. Now we're going to work the right-hand side. So we're going to have negative 12, 1 exponent 4, plus 15, 1 exponent 3, plus 7, 1 exponent 2, minus 16, times 1, plus 12. Oh my goodness, I'm almost out of room. All right, so 1 to the exponent 4 is just 1. 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. I'm going to have plus 15, plus 7, minus 16, plus 12. Now, you could put this all in your calculator, but the more you ask your brain to do mental math, the better and stronger it gets. Um, so we're going to try to do this in our head. So I'm just going to start. Those two, what is, what's the sum? Three, positive three. So this is three, three plus seven. Ten, ten minus sixteen. Negative six plus twelve. Positive six. Does my left hand side equal my right hand side? Yes, it does. So therefore, we know that the product that we found when we did it with the letters is equivalent to what we started with. Okay? So that's just a way to check your answers. Again, if you're doing a test or a quiz and you have the time, going back and checking your answers is a good, is a good method. Okay, more than one variable. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I need you to leave... I need you to leave like a little bit of room on this side because I'm going to do, I'm going to add in an example here. Okay, so just kind of reserve this spot because I'm going to add it in. There is no difference in this. You did this actually on your last quiz. If you were, if you had the, geez Louise, the yellow copy I think had it. Yeah, the yellow copy had it. All right, so two variables shouldn't really mess with you, but we're going to check it out first. I'm going to distribute it. Uh, 3 times 4, 12, and x times x squared. squared. Nice. Okay. 3x uh, times by negative 3y. Uh, uh, negative 9x nine. Negative nine y. Okay. I want to remind you guys that, again, this other math grammar thing it's like we like to keep our letters in alphabetical order, okay? So if I multiply B times A, I usually write it as AB. Does that make sense? We just, we like to keep things organized that way. Uh, 3X times by positive 5. Fifteen 15X, beautiful. All right, I don't know where my pink pen went, but we'll go with it. Um, okay, then I got to do my second one. So negative 2y times by 4x. Negative 2y. Negative 8xy. Even though we're multiplying y by x, it's okay that we write it xy. Because it doesn't matter the order that we multiply in. Uh, okay. Okay. Negative 2y times my negative 3y plus 6y squared. And then negative 2y times by a positive 5 is going to give me a negative 10y. Look at that. I said leave myself some room and I didn't, I didn't do what I said I was going to do. So really, ladies and gentlemen, the only thing that I can combine here, the only like terms are the xy's. That's all I can combine. So lots of people have different, in, different opinions about this, but start with your, um, your, highest, 
your first variable in the alphabet, which would be x, and the highest exponent. So we'd have 12x squared. Then we'd go to plus 15x. Then we'd put our combinations. So negative 9xy minus 8xy. How many xy's do I have? I got a negative and a negative. I got a negative 9 of these and I got a negative 8 of these. It's a negative 17xy. You're not multiplying them, you're just combining like terms. So when I say combining, what I'm asking you to do is add or subtract, is really what I'm asking you to do. And then, oddly, we go in the reverse order. Now we're going to have minus 10y plus 6y squared. It's weird. I don't know why we start with one and end with one, um, but this is the normal pattern for it. Alpha order first. Highest degree, mixed, and then you go to your highest degree on the other side. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm not going to be that picky about it. Um, I don't even know if I'd be that picky of it in grade 12 free cal. Okay, uh, okay let's multiply three things together. Okay, um, okay, don't write this down. Sorry, we were doing the unit circle, bad drawings of circles. Uh, three times six times two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, how would you multiply this? No, perhaps. No. Yeah, how would you do that? Okay, so three times six, you said was 18 times 2, and that gives you 36, right? Because 100%, and if you do that with numbers, you're going to follow the exact same way. Could I have done, could I have done 3 by 2? Yes. Right, like in multiplication, it, how you multiply doesn't matter. So what's 3 by 2? 6 times 6, what's that? 36. We get the same answer, right? So, but this is, as soon as I put letters in, I'll tell you what I see people do. 3 by 6 by 2, they go 3 by 6, okay, that's 18, and then they go 3 by 2, okay, that's 6, 18 times 6 is, and I have no idea why people do it that way, um, because you wouldn't do it if it was just numbers, so that's bad, oh bad, don't do that. Um, so now I'm going to give you an actual example to write down. So let's do this one. Let's do x squared times x minus 2 times 2x plus 4. So now I'm asking you to multiply three things together. So you're going to find the product of the first two. We're going to find, and really you can do them in any order, but I'm going to do them in the order I see them. So I'm going to find the product of these. And then I'm going to bring that down to the next line and multiply it by that third one, okay? So, we're going to leapfrog it. x squared times x. x cubed. x cubed. x squared times by a negative 2. Negative 2x squared? Absolutely. Okay, so did we find the product of those first two? Yes. Hi. There is nothing computer-wise I can fix for you at this desk. Okay, so again, I, uh, like... I'm in the middle of teaching a math class, so I won't be able to help right now. Um, that's okay. If you want to come back in like 15 minutes. Oh, of course. Okay. okay. Yeah, come back in 15 minutes. What's your last name? Uh, Katie York. York? Okay. And so you're just not getting an email. Yeah. Okay. Let me see what I can find out for you. Okay. Thanks, sir. All right. So now all I did was I wrote my product and I multiplied by this binomial. Okay, 
So again, you've done a million of these. We're going to leapfrog it. x cubed times by 2x squared. Yeah. So x cubed times by just a 4. So positive, so it's an add 4x cubed. Then we're going to do the second term. So negative 2x squared times by a positive 2x. That's a 3, by the way. Doesn't look like a very good 3. Okay, then we're going to have a negative 2x squared times by a positive 4. I know that maybe we don't feel confident enough to do it, but um, like, feel free to, like, as long as you know what you're doing. That's, that's my biggest concern. So I can add together my x cubes. So I have a positive 4x cubed and a negative 4x cubed. Zero. Do I need to write zero? No. So I'm going to have 2x to the exponent 4 minus 8x squared. Okay? So that's multiplying with three things. So that's your lesson for today. Today you're going to do easy stuff. You're going to multiply. Super chill, relaxing. And I'm going to hand out your quizzes. So any questions that you have, we can do those. And then when there is seven minutes left, I'm going to give you your daily factoring challenge.